Sweat it to the truth, nothing but the truth. Put my hands on the Bible, y'all put me to the booth. Yo, new season, new colors, new merch, new swag. Go over to Imago Day Apparel Shop and get in your bag with our latest gear. I promise you won't be disappointed. Rep the kingdom, I rock in his image. Every order and purchase goes into helping me bring you better content. And so every order and purchase is greatly appreciated. We thank you for the support and as always, peace and love. Yo, what's going on with it today, bro? So we got a good one for you today, man. So Stephen A has come out and given his thoughts about Barack Obama scolding and chiding, ch chiding, excuse me, men on not supporting and endorsing Kamala Harris. I got to say, bro, put your seatbelts on for this one because this is a good one. Let's tap in. Respectfully, President Obama. What you said is not acceptable. I'm going to say it again. Respectfully, what you said is not acceptable. Not to me, not to a host of black men out there who's not even thinking about voting for Donald Trump. What you said is unacceptable. You see, what you're missing is that you're basically accusing black men who come up with a reason to not support Kamala Harris as engaging in misogyny. Whatever happened to disagreeing without being disagreeable, President Obama? What happened to that? All of a sudden, we want to challenge men and our love and our affection as black men for black women, we want to bring that into question because we've got an election coming up and people may have the temerity to think differently than you. It's because she's a woman that she's in danger of losing this election. Didn't Hillary Clinton win the popular vote in 2016? Didn't she get over 2.8 million more votes than Donald Trump in the popular vote for the 2016 election. Last time I checked, she's a woman. Are we there sitting here and implying that black men would be more apropos to support a white woman than a black woman? Is that what we're saying? Is that what we're saying? It's a rhetorical question because it makes no sense to me. Not that race matters, but you know how these folks operate. So we got to get down on a level. President Obama, why didn't you tell the folks with the cameras rolling and the black men in attendance that there's been diminishing black voters, particularly black men, since you were in office? In 2008, 95% of the black populace voted for Barack Obama. It dipped in 2012 by about 6 to 8%. It dipped another 6% in 2016 when Hillary was running. It dipped even more in 2020 when Trump ran against Biden. It's been dipping since 2008. It didn't just start. Was that about misogyny? Was that about a hesitancy to support our women? I am getting sick and tired of black men being raked through the coals because of some imagery of not being supportive of black women. Do you know what most black men would do if they saw a black woman getting harmed in the streets? They put their lives on the line for that sister. We talked about the, absent, the absence of black fathers in the past. What do we do simultaneously? We applaud the mothers who've uplifted us, who've nurtured us, who've made us into who we are. I can make an argument. No one, no one loves women, particularly black women, more than black men. No one. One. 
You must know this. Black men support the Democratic Party more than everyone but black women. That means we... Which, and we need to cut that out. We need to cut that out because we see how that's been going for us for the last 60 years. God, dog, bro. I'm tired. Support the Democratic Party more than white women, more than white men, more than Latino women, more than Latino men, more than Asian women, more than Asian men. Nobody in terms of percentage supports the Democratic Party more than black people. Black women first, black men second. Even as we sit here today, as Kamala Harris is neck and neck with Donald Trump, she's getting at least 80% of the black vote, according to the polls. And if there's a question mark about her, why don't we tell the truth? May very well have nothing to do with her, per se. Before you get on this, I want to go back to the love part. I want to go back to the love part where he said that black men, nobody loves black women more than black men. And he would most definitely be correct. But I want to say to that, did black men get that same love from Kamala when she was locking them up by the boatloads for small cases, not cases, but small things of weed? I'm talking about for like recreational use, grams and half a grams, and like dudes out here getting crazy sentences. Were we shown love, and not me specifically, but I'm just saying that uh, the men in general shown love from Kamala Harris? But Barack, you expect us to show her our undying and unwavering support when she withheld evidence that would have freed an innocent man and he was black on top of that. The courts had to order them to release the information so that this man would be free. I, man, I don't see how we can support her, especially just after something like that. Something like that. But again, did we get, did we get that same from her? Now, of course, two wrongs don't make a right, but that's irrelevant in this case. So I don't even know why I said that. It's just telling us and it's just showing us that you don't have our best interests in mind, as they always say, these you're going against your better interests. You don't have our best interests in mind because when you had some power, and you still do, but when you had power to convict people and lock them up, you threw a boatload of uh, threw a boatload of a uh, boatload of us in jail. So why should we trust you? Why should we want to give you our vote? And I guess we should ask that to Barack Obama, not necessarily to her. But another thing I want to say. If I if I saw Kamala Harris getting beat up in the street, bro, I would lose my life behind that because I'm a man first and foremost. So a man is supposed to protect. So I and I'm and I'm saying by a man. I don't know if I said that or not, but if I seen her getting beat up in the street, I would go and fight the dude that's beating her up. As I'm pretty sure any man who's a real man would. Now I'm willing to bet you after her appreciation and gratitude and her saying thanks and you know what I'm saying this that and the other thing when she found when she finds out that I'm voting for Donald Trump 
she will have nothing else to do with me. After I literally came and just saved her life, or any man for that matter, came and saved her life, I guarantee you that she won't have anything, nothing at all to do with that man simply because he's voting for Donald Trump. The bigger issue of the matter here is, is that it's not about what I can do for you. It's about what you can do for me. So that when you do this for me, I'm still not going to do anything for you. In the same way Barack Obama was with us. He just showed up being black and 95% of the black vote voted for him. And he did nothing. I mean, he did nothing for America, but black people is included in that. So I'm going to say he did nothing for black people. But, but but black people have have such this undying, again, an unwavering support. Two people who got melanin in their skin. And they could be the devil himself. And we would still go and vote for him. I don't get that, bro. But what she has inherited. You have a president in Joe Biden. Who has his own history. Don't get me started with the crime bill of 1994. And he's talking about her being connected to Joe Biden as to probably why a lot of men aren't voting for her. Not to mention Strom Thurmond. He called him a mentor. Not to mention he did the eulogy of a grand wizard, Robert Byrd, a member of the KKK. He was the grand wizard of the KKK. He did his eulogy. Not to mention him saying that Barack Obama was the first mainstream African-American that was basically uh, clean and, and, and could present himself articulate and basically look presentable. And he said it like he meant like what came out of his mouth is literally what he meant. Although people will take that and be like, that didn't mean nothing, or we, oh, you, you just didn't hear him right. No, bro. No. We want to bring up Trump in the 70s and rent control and all and denying rent to black folks. We don't want to bring up Biden and how he got along with segregationists in the 70s. We don't want to bring up how Kamala Harris, then a presidential candidate in 2020, called him out for his support of segregationists when it came to busing. We want to ignore that. You don't think black people heard that? You don't think there's some trepidation in the hearts and the minds of black people from time to time? At least from the past? Not even talking about what he's done during this administration, which some people will believe his policies and his heart have been in the right place in some of their eyes. You're President Obama. How do you ignore that? To his statement to say that um, some people would say uh, that his heart was in the right place, not with billions of dollars going to Ukraine, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, but Stephen A, come on, bro. It's called media and entertainment. Y'all gaslight. Kind of like you be doing sometimes, Stephen A. Come on now. You know that. It's called gaslighting. That's what Obama is doing. That's why he ignored that. Because it's gaslighting. He knows it. But he glosses over that. They sent Barack Obama. Hey, Barack, we need, you know, we know you got pulled with the blacks. Need you to, you know what I'm saying, man. Show up and do your little cool thing. Get him to vote for your sister. Yeah. Come on, bro. It's called gaslight. Him trying to 
direct our attention off of what we actually see, knowing that the last three and a half years of this administration has been straight up trash. It's been straight up trash. And getting us to simply just simply look at the fact that she's a sister, went to school with you. He, he don't even say he don't even say he'll say with you or with her. He don't even say with you. But you see how they be pandering, man. Even, even the black people, even the black politicians who we know can speak proper and professional, be pandering. The same struggle come from the same background. Man, get that fake stuff out of here, man. Come on. Inflation. The cost of living. The price of gas. The price of groceries. That don't matter. Folks ain't paying attention to that. Immigration and our borders. And this belief that there's an elevated level of sensitivity towards them as opposed to black folks struggling, if not starving in this country. Yes, that plays a role, too. Yeah, because why they sending money and giving billions of dollars to Ukraine and Lebanon and Israel and immigrants. You know, I'm not one who who says that, you know, this group of people should get reparations. I don't believe in that. I mean, I honestly believe we've gotten our reparations in terms of things like uh, food stamps and all these social welfare, welfare programs. But I mean, if we're being honest, if we're being honest, if we're going to actually talk about putting money somewhere, billions of dollars, that can go into our school systems. I mean, if we're being honest, because they always talking about um, the systemic inequality in the, edu in the educational system, it can go into uh, libraries. It can go into community centers. It can go into grocery stores. These billions of dollars can literally be going into these black impoverished neighborhoods that's going to benefit the people in those neighborhoods. I mean, let's just keep it a buck. Let's keep it real. But they don't want to do that. That's too much like right. And if we actually pour into their communities like that, they just may not be dependent on daddy no more. They, they may just not be on our nipple no more. They may just get big, grow up, and do life without us. And we can't afford that because if we do, a lot of us, and I'm talking about Democrats or politicians in general, will be out of a job. So we got to keep somebody depending on us. And since the black folk just can't seem to see what we're doing, let's continue to keep playing tag along with them. It's worked for 60 years so far. Let's keep it up. Let's see. Let's just see how far we might get with this. You never know. I brought it up right here on this show. When the man in New York was talking about $53 million in prepaid credit cards for immigrants who came across our borders illegally and having prepaid credit cards for them. And I said, wait a minute, black folks been starving for years. We ain't get that. You don't think they notice? You don't think they notice? Is it possible that the only reason some black folks, not me, but some black folks may not be inclined to vote or they may be a dis bit disenchanted or dare I say may even be willing to go as far as voting for Trump. Is it possible that it's policy as opposed to misogyny? Is it possible that they looked at a Democratic Party that is locked in on addressing or not addressing immigration and folks crossing the borders illegally and have prioritized focusing on that along with other issues, identity politics and beyond, that that has become such a focal point that has turned off folks 
in the African-American community. Some, not most, not all, just some. It's you know what's crazy, bro? Steven ain't so doggone smart, but he's so doggone dumb, bro. Like, he know all of this stuff. And he know that it's... <laughs> He know that it's a detriment to our community. He know that the stuff that the Democrats are pushing and they're doing and what they're saying are detriments to our community. Nonetheless, he will still tell you that he's not voting for Trump. I believe he is, bro, if I had to be honest. I think that he's just being very strategic in what he's doing. Because he knows that a lot of black people don't really have time to dig into the issues a lot, bro. That's a lot of stuff. I just got into politics in 2020, and it's so much stuff out there. I realized that I still don't know. So I'm reading, I'm studying, I'm learning every day. But when you have people like Stephen A. Smith, who, 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 who really has somewhat of the time to understand the issues and, um be able to talk with other people and then to um you know his level you know he's a smart man his level of understanding that and then being able to articulate that to the people i think he's just one of those news reporters who's just putting it who's just putting it out there just kind of letting you know uh what you're getting with this one and what you're getting with that one i think he's playing it strategic because he does know that if he comes out and says that he voted for trump that that'll probably kill his fan base. I think, and I don't get me wrong. Um, he's been having a lot of biased takes these last past couple of years. He's shown himself to be very disloyal in, in, in some ways. He's shown himself to be a hypocrite and a liar in a lot of ways. And a lot, of, and that has turned a lot of um, uh, black viewer, black viewers off towards him. However, nonetheless, I still believe that uh, majority, um, of his fan base is black. So if he just came out and just was like, you know, uh, Trump, you know, Trump train, Trump 20, Trump 2024, that'll turn again, that'll turn a lot of people. But I, I honestly think, I honestly think he is, bro, if I, if I had to be honest. Is that possible? And is it possible that that is the reason why even Kamala Harris herself has become a bit more assertive in addressing the issue of immigration, in addressing the economy, in addressing a plan for black America as opposed as, as it pertains to facilitating more business loans for minority ownership and things of that ilk. Which was one million people, business owners, got twenty thousand dollars and also something about legalizing weed so money and weed i ain't gonna talk about that too much but i will say that as he said he see kamala harris is actually talking about some real deal issues now because she understands that dang i am losing too much of my men or the men she might say my men in terms of black men but i am losing too much of uh the male support so maybe i do really need to get serious or talk about some of their issues because i see that um black women really ain't leading this thing like i thought that they like i thought they were they ain't that cat ain't got too much pool in them in, in them houses and homes no more Shoot, a lot of these women single now anyway. A lot of these women keep saying that a nigga ain't nothing anyway. Shoot. Maybe I need to start saying some things to these men that's going to turn them back my way. Actually talking about some real deal <laughs> issues. <laughs> Is it possible that black folks, particularly black men, more so than the black women who you look at Roe v. Wade and the woman's rights and what have you and Trump's position. They're like, hey, he's got no chance in hell alluring them in. But is it possible that when it comes to the men, the men are saying, wait a minute. Get all that. But what you going to do for us? 
Could it be the issues as opposed to just misogyny? You know the answer to that question better than me, Barack Obama. The right may have a problem with you. Folks on the left, Democrats, progressives, you're revered. As a black man who is an independent, you are an incredible role model and somebody that I have admired for years. But to say that to black men, to attribute their hesitancy, their reluctance, their reticence to support Kamala Harris, to you just don't want to support a woman, really? And that just keep it a buck, bro. That stuff ain't working anyway. It, and he should have knew that, but maybe he Maybe he thought he had too much for me. Hey, I'm black Jesus. They they listen to every word I say. And people did, for sure. People did. Um, but it's going to take more than Meg the Stallion twerking. It's gonna take more than you quoting Quavo's lyrics. He don't walk it like he dog it. it. You know, it's gonna take more than you talking about you clean collard greens in the bathtub it's we dealing with some real deal issues here today bro we ain't dumb no more well some of us are you gonna have to come with some substance we ain't just looking at skin color no more it ain't that because again we saw we 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 saw and we seen the democrat not do anything for us that's why they feel so entitled to us now that's why somebody like barack obama can come out and speak to us as if he's our father because of our undying and unwavering unwavering gratitude i mean unwavering support towards them that's really why if i'm being if if, if i'm being honest and of course we can be mad at that but we have to be we have to be honest with ourselves as well to say that you know what maybe i allowed that maybe i opened the door towards that because we got these people thinking that we family more than these people are workers for us they are workers for us bro that they're, they're politicians. They're there to represent the, the people. They're there to uh, listen to our interests and the things that we want and the things that we don't want and see ways to implement those. It's no different than when you go to McDonald's and you give them your order. They hear what you want. They take that order. They write it down, they put it on the screen, and they make it in the back, and they bring it to you. And if that's not the order that you want, that you want it, then it's a problem. You can get your money back. That's not, and that's not going to look good on the cus. I mean, on the employee, the workers. But somehow that relationship has become it's flip flop. Now it's the Democrats telling us what they want instead of it instead of us telling them what we want so we've allowed that but i thank god that people are waking up that people are beginning to realize that it's more than just oh man you my people man come on man look out for your brother come on man look out come on man look out for your boy nah bro Nah, what you got to offer me? I'm going to offer you something in return. I'm going to make sure you good in return. But you also, but you also got to look out for me too. And we not just, because you know when people be on, you be owning businesses and, you know, black folks always want to come up to you, say something. You might say some $40. Oh, come on, man. 
Come on, man. What about 20? I got 20, right? Bro, you they want you wouldn't go to Walmart and do that. If anything, because I'm a small business owner, and this is off subject, but y'all know what I'm saying. But I'm a small business owner, and you say it's forty dollars, bro. I, bro, I want to give you forty five dollars. I want to give you fifty dollars just because I want to see you prosper. And I'm not just saying. I'm not just saying black people. I'm not just saying black because I, I don't limit it to that. I'm just, I'm saying any business owner, but I'm just saying this should be this should be our mindset to people who are trying to make a make a living coming you know make a living coming up but we should not again give our undying unwavering gratitude to unwavering support excuse me to these people just because they black the bible say when i was a child i thought as a child when i became a man i put away childish things that's what i see men are doing right now they are thinking like me, no longer, no, no longer boys, putting away those childish things. They're looking at what's best for their communities, what's best for them, what's best for their families, what's best for America. They're beginning to see that, hey, maybe I need to get past this racist rhetoric. Maybe I need to uh, stop seeing as America as this racist and hateful nation. And maybe I need to start holding myself accountable and taking responsibility for what I do, for my actions. And maybe I just might see some uh, progress in my future. Not saying that we aren't seeing it now, but so many, but so many people are so fixated again on this race thing and on racism and on hatred and on discrimination that they're literally missing the opportunities that's right in front of them and again they're hinging off on the nipple of the democrats while the democrats is dragging you in the mud and just using you we ain't seen barack obama this whole time all of a sudden he just he come out of nowhere all of a sudden he come out of nowhere barack obama you a clown you a joke bro <laughs> Go back to where you came from, dog. We want to hear what Kamala got to say. And if she ain't got nothing worthwhile to say, she's fired. Straight up. It is what it is. But, yo, let me know what y'all think, bro. He had a little bit more, but my phone is done and my laptop is done. So I got to go. Peace. Love. We out. 100, 100, 100, that's all I know. Ain't taking a dime off. We working, we working, we working, and then for show. Ain't taking no time off. We serving, we serving, we serving, deliver hope. Forget all that crime talk. 100, 100, 100, that's all I go. Yeah, that be what I'm.